What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to read Hangul, the Korean alphabet. And in just about an hour, you'll know how to read and write almost anything in Korean. Although, of course, to fully master it, you'll need to practice more. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Just like English alphabets, Hangul also consists of two parts. Consonants, 자음, and vowels. 모음. We'll first learn how each consonant and vowel sound, and then learn how to put them together to form and read an actual word. And let's start with consonants, 자음, first. There are a total 14 basic consonants in Hangul. Later on, we'll cover the double consonants, like these guys, and that makes the total number of Hangul consonants 19. But we'll go over these basic ones first. The first term is 기억. And it has g sound because it looks like a gun. I hope you agree with the resemblance. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to remember the name of each consonant for now, but knowing their name helps you understand what sound each consonant has. So just for your reference, I am mentioning the name of each consonant. And also notice that the name of each consonant includes that very consonant in the first and final consonant place. It's like this with every other consonant, as you'll figure out as we learn on. Next one is nian, and this one has n, n sound, because it looks like a nose. So nose for nian. Next one is tig. As you probably guessed it already by its name, it has d sound, because it looks like a door. So door for tig. This one is liel. And it has L sound because it looks like a rattlesnake. Or more accurately, it's somewhere between L or R, like L, li -ul, L. But we'll just leave it at L if you're a beginner. Bium. And it has M sound because it looks like a mouth. Oh, guys, and so notice that there's a correct stroke order for each consonant, and I'm following the order when I write each consonant so that you guys can learn to write in a correct way. But most Koreans, including myself, don't always follow them. Like, for example, when I write miyum, I usually write it like this, and some people write it like this. It just unconsciously happens because it's easier this way. But if you are a beginner, it's better to follow the correct orders. Back to next term. This one is piup and it has b sound because it looks like a bucket. So bucket for piup. Siot and it has s sound because it looks like someone is standing. Notice that it's not a s sound, but s, as in standing, or sky, or smell. There is another consonant that has s sound, which we'll learn much later when we're covering double consonant. This circle consonant's name is iung, and it has no sound of its own. It just follows whatever vowel sound that comes next. We'll learn how to read the words with ing later when we cover the vowels. Tiut, and it has J sound. Z. It can also be written like this. T, tiut, tiut, and it has T sound. Just one extra short line above Z. It can also be written like this. Kyuk, and this has k sound like kill because remember this one was a gun, right? And you pull the trigger of the gun and then you kill people. So k, kill. 
I know it sounds kind of inappropriate, but this actually works great. You'll never forget how to read g and k with gone and kill analogy. Anyways, next one is t g t g, and it has t sound because remember d was a door, and now there are two doors. So two doors for t g t g. P has p sound because it looks like part two, part two, p. Heat, heat has h sound because it looks like a man in a hat, a man in a hat. And here are all the consonants and their sounds in one full screen. Let's go over them one more time, one by one. G, gone. N, nose, d, door, l, rattlesnake, m, mouth, b, bucket, s, standing, no sound, z, t, k, kill with a gun. T, two doors. P, part two. H, a man in a hat. A man in a hat. Okay, beautiful. So next, we'll learn how to read and write the vowels. There are more vowels than there are consonants, and these ten vowels you see on the screen is not all the vowels that Hangul has. There's many more, but these are the basic ten. So we'll start with these ones. There is a difference between the vowels that you see on the first line and the rest on the second line. The first five ones are placed next to the consonant, and the second ones are placed under the consonant. So yes, when you're combining consonants and vowels, always, always consonants precede vowels, and there are two options where a following vowel can be placed, either next to the consonant or below the consonant. So let's start with the first five vowels. A, a, and this one is the same except that there's double lines, right? And it sounds ya. Ya, a, and ya. So when there's a line doubled, that means y sound is added at the front. It's like this with the next two vowels too, as you'll see. So this one is a, a, and this one with double lines is, as you've guessed it, ya, because y sound is added at the front as the line is doubled. And this one's easy. It's e, e, not i, e. And now that we know how to read them, let's take a look at how they're written. So stroke order is always from top to bottom and left to right. And you start with whatever is written on the left side. So a ah is written like this: vertical line and then horizontal line. Ya, like this, vertical first, and then two horizontal lines, starting with what's on the upper part first. And with a, you start with the horizontal line first because it's on the left side. And same with ya, two horizontal lines first, and then one vertical line. E is easy. You just draw a line from top to bottom. Next up, down vowels. Again, these are the vowels that are placed underneath the consonant. O, o, yu, yu. As you can see for here as well, double lines mean Y sound is added in the beginning. U. And as you've guessed it, this is you, you. And this one's a bit tricky to write in Roman alphabets because I believe there's no equivalent sound in English, but it sounds like u, 
ugh. Like when you're disgusted by something, you say ugh, ugh. It's kind of like that. Uh, uh, uh. For down vowels, whatever is on the upper side is written first. So for O, you start with the short vertical line and then a horizontal line. For YO, two short lines first and then horizontally. For U, you start with the horizontal line and then the vertical line. For U, it's the same. You start with the horizontal line and then two vertical lines. Last one, you just draw one horizontal line and that's it. And it sounds uh, uh. We'll go over the 10 vowels that we just learned again, just for review. A, uh, ya, o, yo, i, u, yo, u, yu, e. Perfect. Now that we learn how each consonant and vowel is pronounced, let's combine them and learn how to read the actual words. You can try reading it yourself before I tell you how to read it. N, A, B, I, Nabi, Nabi. And it means a butterfly. Next one. D. O. And O is the vowel that's placed underneath the consonant, right? So it's placed here, as you can see. So, do -shi. Not do -shi because si has s sound, not s sound. So, do -shi. And it means city. Okay, so let's practice more. So we learned that this circle-shaped consonant has no sound, and you can just read whatever vowel that follows. So the vowel that's placed beside it is A. So this becomes A. And this one is G, I, G, A, G, A, G. And it means a baby, like the actual cute little baby. K. O. P. E. Coffee. Can you guess what it means? That's right, it means coffee. I'm actually drinking coffee right now as I'm filming this. Anyways, moving on to the next one. H, A, M, A, Hama, Hama. And it means hippo, as in hippopotamus. And next one, Iung has no sound. We can just read the vowel sound. U, I. U, I. And it means a cucumber. N, A, L, A, Na, La, Nara. It means nation or a country. U, L, I, Uri, Uri. And it means us or we. S, O, N, Y, Sonia, Sonia, and it means a young girl. Tari, D, A. L, I, tari, tari. It has two meanings, a bridge and a leg. 
Okay, so this is not it. I brought more words that you can practice with, but if you want to skip to the next part of the lesson, you can always go ahead and come back later to this practice segment whenever you want to. And those who want to continue to practice, you are more than welcome to stay and follow along with me. This time we'll go a bit faster since I believe you guys got the hang of how to read each word. G, O, M, I, K, M, K, M, and it means a spider. A, N, I, A, N, I, A, N, I, and it means no. A, N, I, O, it means no as well, but it's an honorific form. Pa, G, O, N, I, P, A, G, U, N, I, Pa, G, O, N, I. It means a basket. B, O, S, E, bus, bus. It means a bus. U, 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 U. It means milk. I, Y, A, G, I, Y, A, G. It means a story. M, O, Z, A, B, O, Z, B, O, Z. It means a hat. Or a cap. P a s e t a p a s t a. As some of you guessed it, it means pasta. L a z a n y a. Lasagna. Lasagna. And it means lasagna. Lasagna. Okay, so at this point, we learn how to read 14 consonants and 10 vowels so far. And we also learn how to read the actual Korean words. And I consider that quite a progress. And you can give yourself some cheers or a pat on the back. And also thank you for making it this far with me. And now let's move on to the remaining 11 vowels that we haven't learned yet. The first four vowels are the vowels that are placed beside the consonant and the rest of the vowels on the second line are the ones placed beneath the consonant. Let's begin with the first four. This vowel that kind of looks like an alphabet H sounds E, E, as in like apple, E. And the one next next to it is also pronounced E. There's basically no distinction in sound, just in the way they are written. But both are pronounced E. The same sound, E. And the second vowel sounds like ye, Because as we've learned, if the line is doubled, Y sound is added in the front. This one is also ye. And same, no distinction in sound, just in the way they're written. E, ye, e, ye. And here's the stroke order for each one. As I have said, always top to bottom and left to right. And you start with whatever is placed on the left side first. So you can write along with me as I write on the screen. Next one, we, we. This is o and e combined, but you shouldn't read it as oi, oi. Um, it's we, we, we. This one is o and wa combined, and it becomes wa, wa, wa. We. This one is we as well. Same with this one. U and e combined. We. 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 U and e combined. We. 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 And this is wa. Wa. 
U and A combined. Wa, wa, wa. We. This one also has we sound. U and A combined. We, 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 we. And this way, and this way, and this way sounds almost the same, but not exactly the same. But for now, you don't need to make that distinction. Just remember that they all sound just the same way. E, 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 and e combined, and it becomes e, e, e. And again, here's the stroke order for each of them. We. Wa. We. We. Wa. We. Okay, so let's read everything one more time. E, ye, e, ye, we, wa, we, we, wa, we, e. These vowels are hard because they look similar. They look and sound similar, so it might take some time for them to register with you fully. But if you keep practicing, you'll get used to it, and you'll be able to make distinctions. So for now, let's practice the new vowels that we just learned with the Korean vocabularies that I brought here. Starting with the first one, remember that this is ye, and this is gi, ye gi. Ye gi. It means a story or a talk. S e s e s e. It means a bird. N e n e n e. It means yes, and it's an honorific form. On a side note, we'll learn the difference between. 반말 and 존댓말, which is the informal form and honorific or formal form. 예. This consonant is what we haven't learned yet, and it's a double consonant, and it has b, b sound like apple. So this is 예, 예쁘다. It means pretty, pretty. 왜, 왜. It means why. 과자, 과자. It means snack. 외로워, 외로워, 외로워. It means lonely. Shake, shake, shake. It means shake, like milkshake. 왜, 이, 트, 어. 웨이터, 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 웨이터. It means a waiter at a restaurant. 의자, 의자, 의자. It means a chair. 위, 두, 위, 위, 두, 위, 두. The first word means up, 
and the second one means behind. Okay, so great job, everybody. Now it's time to learn the double consonant, zang zang. Literally, it is the consonant that's doubled. The consonant you see here is a double consonant too. As you can see, the consonant siot is doubled and it became sang siot. Sang means a pair, a couple. So sang siot means that there are two siot. There are only five consonants that can form double consonant, and it's these five. So kiok double becomes sangiok, digut double becomes sangdigut, biup doubled becomes sangbiup, siut doubled becomes sangsiut, jiut doubled becomes sangjiut, sangjiut. And starting with sangiok, it has g sound. It sounds like Spanish g sound. I believe there's no equivalent in English, but it sounds similar with como, como, g, g in Spanish. Next one, sangdigut has d sound. It sounds like Spanish d sound, like tres, tu, te. So d, d. And next, sangbiup has b sound, like apple, apple, b, b. Sangsiut has s sound. As we learned, siut has s sound, not s sound. And sangsiut has s sound, like sun, sail, set. And so on. Last one is sangjiut. It has z sound. Z, z. Have you guys heard of the Korean phrase "chinta"? Chinta. It means really, and people use it when they get surprised or shocked by like certain news. And the "ja" sound comes from this consonant. Chinta, chinta, g. The, b, s, z. Okay, so we're almost done. What we have left unlearned is the final consonant, patim, patim. It would take so much time to explain all the pronunciation rules concerning patim, and it would be quite overwhelming to take them all in at first. So for now, we'll cover the very basic of it. And I'll try to make a separate video on patsim alone, so you can learn more in depth how to read words and sentences with patsim. Okay, so patsim is the consonant that comes at the very last of kulta. So patsim is always placed beneath the consonant vowel combination. All consonants can become patsim except these three: sangdigut, sangziot, and sangbiup. Except for these three, every consonant can become patsim. Let's start with kiok. When kiok becomes patsim, it sounds like this: kak, nak, mak, pak. As you can hear, it doesn't end with g sound. It's not kag, nag, mag, pag, but you drop the g sound at the end. And it just becomes kak, nak, mak, pak, ug sound, ug. Nian for patsim sounds like this: kin, chan, kan, pan. So it's basically similar with when the English alphabet n is placed at the end of the word. It doesn't end with n sound, but clean. N, n sound. Tigut for patsim sounds like tat, mat, mit. It doesn't have d sound, but you drop the d sound at the end, and it becomes a clean ut, ut sound. Lil for patsim. Kal, nal, tal, mal, ul. It does not end with l, l, but just 
el, el. Diem for patim. Kam, nam, tam, um. It's not um, but just a clean um, um, where you drop the um sound at the end. Beautiful. Next one. Piep for patim. Pap. Sop. Keep. Hup. It's not up, but it's just up. Up. Very clean up sound. Next one. Siut. Kit. Dot. Tat. Ut. It's not us, but just ut. Ut. Where you drop the su sound and it's just clean ut. Next one, when ing becomes a final consonant, it produces ng sound. Ng, ng. For example, we all know BTS, and the first BT stands for pang tan. There's a ing as a final consonant here. Pa ng, pang, pang, pang tan, pang tan sonyan tan. When tiut becomes a final consonant, kat, kot, tit. Again, it's not ud, ud, but just ud, ud. No tzu sound at the end, and just ud, and that's it. Same with tiut, it's not ud, ud, but just ud, ud, chut, tat. When kyuk is patim, it's read similar with kyok. It's not ug, but og, right? And same with kyok, it's not uk, but it's ok. Like he jil nyok, nyok, this is not nyok, it's nyok. And puok, not puok, right? So ok, ok. When pub is patim, it's same with pub. It's not sop, sop, but it's sop, sop. When hid is patim, it sounds nothing at all like h. It's usually combined with the consonant that comes next or does not produce any sound at all. For example, this word is read chua. Chua, not chuhua. So the H sound is removed, and this one is nuta, nuta, because hid and tigit here is combined and produce t sound. Again, this is a rule of patsim that we'll cover in a separate video. But for now, you just can remember that when hid is patsim, it has no sound or usually combined with the next consonant. Moving on to double consonants for patim, as I told you, only these two can become patim, sangiok and sangsiot. They're not difficult. It's the same with kiok and siot patim. So nak and nak sound the same. Sok and sok sound the same. And moving on to sangsiot. Head and head sounds the same. Eat and eat sound the same. Okay, so we learn how to read the words with patim for every consonant. This one is te, han, min, guk. Te han min guk. Again, it's not te han min guk. It's te han min guk. Nak si, nak si, nak si. Tut tan be, tut tan be, tut tan be. Not tut tan be, tut tan be, tut tan be. Be them, be them, be them, be them.
방탄소년단 방탄소년단 짓다 짓다 갔다 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 해질녘 해질녘 높다 높다 좋은 좋은 사람 좋은 사람 끝끝 잘했어요 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 여러분 잘했어요 안녕 안녕 Okay, so we covered everything we need to know about reading Hangul except the detailed rules of Patim. And that alone I'll cover in the next video for you to learn and practice in depth. And thank you so much for following me till the end. I'm so proud of you guys. I hope you find my lesson helpful. And I also hope you practice more and get used to reading and writing Hangul as fast as you can so that learning Korean becomes more effective, fun, and easier for you. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much again and bye-bye. Annyeong!